a par. 1271. Bomb calorimeter. So we got two towers here. And we got our controller with a printer. Just taking a walk around the back. Just, uh, oh, well, here we do have a manual that will be sent along with it. It explains how to do the installation, operation, and service maintenance. Very good manual. Uh, just to start out, uh, we're using 110 volt uh, supply power for each of the tower, the two towers, as well as the controller. We have our connections for our printer here, which is connected up to the computer port, and we got a power for the printer, it's 12 volts. Uh, and then we got our two communication ports, they're both labeled uh, control, control link one and two. So this would be our tower one on the right hand side here from the back, and this is our tower two. And then down here we have our water handling system. I just want to point out, I don't know if you uh, take a look at this. This is our schematic for all the uh, all the tubing that's here. I'm going to send this tubing along. When we received the system, we didn't have any of the tubing. We didn't have our rinse tank. You can use one or two. Right now, I don't, uh, we don't, we're only going to supply you with one. But this is our water in for our rinse portion of the uh, operation. And it's supplied with uh, pressure from the uh, tower one. And there's a uh, distilled water placed in here. And then finally, we, we're using this five gallon bucket as a carboy, which is just a, a waste tank. And then one thing to point out right now, I have a loop right here for a chiller, a cold water, water chiller that we don't have on site right now. We ordered it and it should be coming in within the next few days. But uh, we'll be able to do a functionality test uh, without that chiller in place. But uh, you know, once that comes in, we'll send that along. Basically, you're gonna hook up a cold water supply to uh, Port seven and eight. Uh, again, that's explained on this drawing here. And you can see the water cooler is here. And again, we're only using one rinse tank, and that's uh, with the, uh, distilled water to clean out the uh, vessel after the uh, the bomb has been completed. And this is our carboy again. And uh, we are supplying uh, 100 psi to both uh, towers uh, from our house uh, CDA system. Now you can use a CDA system or you can use uh, N2. And again, I did all your tubing here. I'll send this along. It's what I had here and I just you know, adapted it to work. Uh, all the requirements for the exact tubing is in the manual. If you, you, you decide to uh, use what the, uh, uh, is in the manual. But uh, I'll send this along anyway. And just one thing to point out, that I do have this plank off here because the air supply for our, own, our, our one uh, rinse tank uh, system here, it's a pressurized uh, distilled water system. Uh, if you were to have two, you would just bring that over to the other one and split this into two here. And then uh, finally, we don't have the capability of running oxygen in our system, so uh, we're just leaving this open. And I'll do a test and it'll just come up with a uh, O2 uh, error. Now this, the requirements for the bomb is to have a, a roughly 450 uh, PSI regulated oxygen. And we just don't have that capability here right now. So uh, we'll just go ahead and run a functionality test and demonstration here on the system and uh, we'll go from there. We'll start here with the controller. Uh, as you can see, the screen is dark. All you need to do is hit enter. There is a uh, screensaver on that. And uh, we'll just escape all the way back to the main menu, which is here. So we're going to look at the calorimeter uh, option by hitting enter. And so here uh, you'll see the screen that uh, will show you the option. Uh, to point out here, I just want to show you that the uh, heater and pump can be turned on and off. It's off there now. And as you can see, the uh, jacket temperature is up at around 30, which is it uh, is coming from your water handling system. And so there's a heater in there, and then when the chiller is hooked up, if it needs to cool, it'll be using that chilled water as a, a method of cooling. 
And uh, let's just go around the back one more time. I want to point out your, uh, your throat. Oh, in, in here is just, uh, it's just water with a, a, a wetting agent. Again, that's explained in the manual what you'll need there. And uh, just point out real quickly, these are your communication links from your, your, uh, your control communication links from your uh, controller. But each one has a probe here, so you have a calorimeter probe, two. So these are for the buckets inside the tower one and two. And then you have a jacket probe down here. So they're, they're just measuring the temperature. So the temperature of the jacket would al will always be the temperature of this reservoir. And they're connected right back up here to the back of the controller. So you have three probes. So we'll, they're, they're all labeled, explained in the manual. So. All right, let's go right back around to the front. Uh, I'll just do a print screen real quick to show you that the printer is working. Okay, the printer works. Okay, now looking at our screen here, you can see our temperature. So our bucket temperature uh, probes are working. It's reading. Uh, 24 degrees and our jackets up at uh, 30. And again, this is just a functionality test to show you that uh, all these subsystems are working. I'm going to escape out of this. You can go into a diagnostic mode by hitting 9. And uh, from here, you can see there's a number 7 is a basic calorimeter function, so which we're going to do. But there's also the uh, I.O. Diagnostics. So if I were to go to two, from here you can check out each one of the towers. Uh, uh, the ignition circuit, the motor diagnostics, and the I.O. Driver Diagnostics. So let's go to three here, for instance. I just want to show you, I, I went through uh, both of these and tested all of uh, the, it's basically controlled a lot of the valving here. And, uh, for instance, here's the O2 fill. You can turn it on or off. Right now we don't have oxygen hooked up, but you'll be able to hear the valve open and close. So we'll just step through that. So these are all the functions I've, I've gone through and tested to make sure everything was working properly. So again, I've done this to both uh, Tower 1 and Tower 2, gone through and checked all the IOs, checked the motor diagnostics. So that's a, just a means of uh, doing service on your system here. So let's just step back here. What I do want to do is let's, let's go down to number 7 here, which will run basic functions for each calorimeter, 1 and 2. Again, 1 is on your left here from the front, label PT. So you'd place your sample inside here, and you'd bring a cotton thread down into your sample. This is, again, all explained in the manual. You load this up, and uh, and we also have a one here on for two. So let, let's work on one first. Oh, just one thing to point out. Um, I put a beaker here. This is for your rinse. So when, when it calls to do a rinse, you're... Uh, It'll drain into the speaker, and you can set that up again in your in your controller and how you want to how you want to uh, rinse it. Again, explain it in the manual. So from here, what we'll do is uh, we'll just go right to uh, number three here, which is a uh, number three would be the rinse. Now we'll, we'll go to number four, which is a pre-testing cycle, which is going to bring it all the way through its uh, its operation up to the point where it's going to fail for an O2 air. Uh, O2 pressure error because there's an O2 pressure uh, sensor in here, and if the O2 pressure is in error, it, it'll, it'll kick out the, uh, the pre-testing cycle. And again, we're not using O2, so that's what's going to happen. So, set up the way we are now. I'll go ahead and run number four. You can see.
see, they always ask you to close your uh, guard, which I'll do first. I'm just going to bring the head up into the vessel, lock it in place. Right now it's filling a bucket, it's a little hard to see, but you can see that the lid closed. Not much to see here, but the, the, the controller will give you an error if there's any error that uh, occurs during this pre-testing cycle. And like I said, it's gonna, it should fail at the O2 because there's no You've got the error for the low, low pressure on the O2. So now it's pumping the bucket back out. And then it's going to remove it and feed the head. And this is just a functionality test. Bucket is pumped out, now it's going to have to retrieve the head. And we'll do the same for tower two just to show that functionality. The guard raises up. Okay, now we, like I said, we'll do the same for uh, number two by hitting eight. Again, it's asking me to close the guard. It's a safety feature. goes up and it'll lock it in place, drop down and it'll literally close the ignition circuit. It'll fill a bucket up with water. So the water's coming out of the uh, the water handler system and there's a little pump inside the uh, bucket there that makes some noise you hear right now. So it's repairing it for the bomb process. Again, it's going to fail with the DO2 not being there. Now what it needs to do is draining the bucket. That's what's up right now. Okay, now once the bucket is empty, it'll go up and we'll go ahead from the uh, vessel. Okay, so going back to this screen here, again, uh, these are basic uh, calorimeter functions, head up and get head is, is demonstrated by the pre-testing cycle by putting, placing the head into the vessel and then removing it when necessary. The only thing we didn't see was the rinse bomb, so we'll go ahead with number three since I have the beaker under there on this port here, but on, the, on number one. I'll, I'll hit number three. Now this is where you, uh, the vessel will be rinsed with the... Uh, Distilled water that's in the uh, pressurized tank. Again, it asks us to close the lid, and you'll see that this fills up. And this is a typical rinse cycle. Uh, it is programmable, and I haven't. I, I left it where it was programmed at. So. And you'll see that this will eventually fill up. The head has to be in place, otherwise the water would drip right out of the vessel. Of course. So. So now the water from the uh, pressurized tank is now entering the vessel and will be diverted out to, towards your beaker here. You can see the water coming out now. 
So just, just a method of cleaning, cleaning your vessel after the bomb process. And I tested it on number two, and uh, it's just wanted to show you how that works. It doesn't use much water, so you'll need to refill your uh, pressurized tank every, you know, depending on how much you use it. Just run the, uh, the number two the same way, just to show that it is working. Do the rinse on number two. We'll press uh, seven. Then close the guard. Okay, so the process is totally op uh, automatic and uh, it's explained in the manual how to set it up. Again, without having oxygen uh, at 450 PSI uh, attached to the system, we can't do the actual bomb. But this will show you that the uh, system is operational up to this point. And we'll escape out. Uh, here are some of your other functions in your main menu. And for instance, look it up. Operating controls. The manual is very good. It'll explain all this information for you if you don't know it already. Okay, that's it for our functionality test.